if I told you that you were going to stand in a field and get feedback on your leadership skills from a horse, <laughs> you'll all think I'm crazy. <laughs> but all disruption is crazy in the beginning. Remember Bill Gates, some of you will, in the 1990s said every home will have a PC on it. We all thought he was crazy too. And now technology is everywhere. So much so that we have only 5% of the human interactions that we had 30 years ago. Think about that. 95% of the interactions from 30 years ago are now online. And the research shows that our online interactions are six times less empathetic. The result? Isolation, loneliness, mental health issues. In truth, we're emotionally disconnected. And horses can help us change that. <laughs> Eight years ago, I was terrified of horses and I left my corporate career and uh, it was only when I left my corporate career that my leadership skills began in earnest. Because when you stand face to face with 800 kilograms of horse and they say, yes, yes I will come with you. There is no greater acknowledgement of your leadership. <laughs> and that's why every board needs a horse, so that they can get that instant feedback and that acknowledgement of their brilliance, but also to tell them to pay attention to human connection. I'm going to explain how I work with horses in a moment, but first I want to tell you a story about Tiffin, who is one of my horses. An ex-race horse, he was the sweetest horse when he arrived. He did everything I asked him to do. So easy. His back is above my eyes. His head goes out of reach. So he's enormous, 700 kilograms, but he was so gentle for nine months. Because when he arrived, we knew he'd not had the best start in life because he arrived with whip marks across his face and down his side. I'd mistaken his compliance for willingness. And once he realised he had an opinion, he exploded and he used his 700 kilograms to shove me around. And it was terrifying. Because remember, I am a novice horse owner. I'd been terrified of horses. His willingness was fear of getting it wrong, fear of making a mistake, fear of having a voice. And so he tolerated everything, even though we knew he had an opinion, he felt as though he didn't. Just like millions of people in organisations. You see, we think we give them a choice, but we don't. We think we give them a voice, but they don't think they have one. And the difference between compliance and willingness is so subtle, it's almost impossible to read, unless you're a horse. And that's why I work with horses, so let me explain. Horses respond based on your non-verbal communication. So what you're thinking and feeling and all of your intentions, they respond based on that. So they cut right to the heart of who are you as a human being right through all of the masks that you put on at work and you pretend to be clever, they see through all of that. There's nothing easy about standing in a field with a horse who's 800 kilograms, seven or 800 kilograms. When they say no, it's clear. <laughs> There's nothing subtle about their no, it's just a flat no. And that's why every board needs a horse. Because we need to know, where are we being brilliant? And where are we sabotaging human connection? Where, where are we pushing down our emotions because we think we have to put up and shut up when we actually don't? 
And that's why I work with horses. And something as simple as a horse walking in a circle, they'll come with you when two key things line up. You're very clear about the result and where you're going and you provide the clarity and you bring them through a strong relationship based on trust and mutual respect. Two very simple things and we flip between being very clear about results or being very relational. What horses need is for both to be lined up together. That's what we need as human beings too. Every year, Zurich Financial Services creates a global risk report. And in 2019, they cited a decline in empathy and a rise in anger as one of the top five global risks of our time. That's alongside cybersecurity and climate change. And the decline in empathy and rise in anger is quite simply stress behavior. Because when we feel under pressure to drive results and lead change, as all of us everywhere around the world is under that pressure today. Which means we're operating under stress behavior. And when we do that, we forget to be human. And that's why every board needs a horse to remind them that yes, results are important, otherwise we can't be game changers and we can't lead change in the world and do amazing things that organizations are doing. So yes, we need the results and we need the empathy and the human connection to help us do it. Every leadership team I ever speak to says, how do we get people to change their behavior? We need people to do more faster. We need this, we need that. Why aren't people doing what I want them to do? Well, if I stood next to my horse and said, why aren't you doing what I want you to do? I think you know the response. Mr. Blue is the cheeky class clown in my team. He's a gray horse. He has no idea where his legs are. They're all skittish and all over the place all of the time. If it's not fun, he's not moving. I can tell you in the middle of winter, in the mud, when it's blowing a gale and there's horizontal rain, sometimes it's not fun. But if I want Mr. Blue to move his feet, I have to find the joy in it. <laughs> and we can do that when it's difficult in our offices and in our workplaces too. And that's why every board needs a horse, to remind us to find the joy in our work, to find that human connection and remember to be human. The future's here now. We've heard about the robots. They're not just coming, they're here. And as technology is leading more change in our world and in our society, we need to evolve our human behavior too. Because if we only have 5% of our human interactions that we used to have, there better be good ones. <laughs> but I need your help. I want to reach more people. I have seen people completely transform in front of my eyes. Like John, a lawyer known for being brutal. When he led a horse, he was kind and gentle. And his team said, why are you not that compassionate with us? And he said, I didn't think you'd respect me if I was too nice. His team said, I respect you more now I know that you have a heart. Horses want us to engage our hearts and our minds and bring the two together. And people need us to do that too. And sometimes, People like John need permission to know that it's okay to have compassion in the workplace and that it's not a weakness, that when we bring emotion and human connection, it's powerful and it's palpable and it gets results. So I want your help. I want to reach more people. I want the horses to show people how to be human because I know that when People in organizations change their behavior. Everyone in society benefits. So I'm looking for 100 leaders who want to come and experience the value of working with horses, that they are willing to take a risk and be eyeball to eyeball with a horse and be willing to be told yes and to be willing to be told 
no, not that. Because when we do that and we feel our leadership, everything changes. Maya Angelou famously said, people will forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And that's why every board needs a horse, because we need to remember that it's OK to be human. It's OK to feel our leadership, because that's when we create change in the world. And I leave you with this. In the heart of Warwickshire, there is a field. A field where the moment you enter into it, you have no idea whether your leadership skills are going to stack up the way you think they can and should. The horses there will show you how to feel your leadership. You'll never forget it.